Where do people live in America? Everywhere, right? There's thousands of cities. So if you're if the one city you're looking at doesn't like Airbnb, yes. go to the next city. Because again, you don't have to be in a touristy place or a vacation yep. place for Airbnb to do well. And even if that's the case, because most people, if you buy an Airbnb, you want to be able to you want to be able to have a second home, vacation home. There's a thousand places in America that are that have lakes and views and snow. So if yep. one city doesn't like Airbnb, go somewhere else. That is not a factor. Welcome to Apartment Syndication Made Easy Podcast, where we simplify the world of syndication. Join us as we unravel the complexities and provide you with valuable insights to help you invest smartly. Get ready to take your investments to the next level, one episode at a time. Here's your host, Mr. Vinny Smiles Chopra. So you can tell me, I am going to really pick up your brain because what happened is, I'm going in big business in Airbnb. You got me excited. I've been thinking about it for the last four years. Okay. And when you did the presentation in Walnut Creek, I made up my mind that night that I'm going to go in business with brother Eric or with some other partner, but we could all three work together, whatever it works, but he's done two amazing okay. ones. We just did the numbers. 37 percent cash and cash nice first year first year did you guys factor in the, the cost segregation also everything oh no, yeah. we didn't no oh yeah. we did not oh my gosh he's gonna blow it promote he's gonna love this you just he'll be excited about the cost segregation something most, really special. most people don't think about cost segregation when it comes to single family residents but it's also there yes Oh, beautiful. And I'm going to ask you who is the right company for you. I know multifamily, I know, but I would love to see what company does great one for Airbnb. And we are going big, brother. We are going big. So I'm excited. Share with me your story. I'm doing this as a my, my followers who are on social media will be doing reels, will be doing all these things and spreading the good word. Airbnb has got a bad rap lately. But why are you so excited about it? So I'm excited about it, Vinny, because number one, I know the real stats and Airbnb is not doing bad. There is no Airbnb bus. It's doing very well. Those are just the economic yeah. housing stats, which I know I'm a 21 year mortgage veteran. So I'm also, uh, I also have a degree in economics. So I nerd out on all the actual data all day long. So anytime I reference mm -hmm. data, Vinny, I'm not telling you my personal opinion. I'm not telling you someone else's personal opinion, just no. housing economical data, right? So nothing but the facts. Number two is I own six six properties, six luxury yes. properties, four and five bedrooms. These aren't yep. two bedroom condos. These are large homes. So I'm hosting groups of 10 people across six properties across three different states all the time. My Airbnb profile now I think shows like over 600 five-star reviews. So yep. I'm boots on the ground. I'm the front line. Like I see what's happening on my properties. I know the economical data and Airbnb is doing great. So first off, uh, the reason why I'm personally doing great is I bought houses in areas where people like to travel. Obviously, Tahoe, Scottsdale. But guess what? You don't have to be in a touristy place because people use Airbnbs now instead of hotels. So I also, yep. I also have uh, two properties in the East Bay area around Concord, California. And if you guys mm -hmm. don't know where that is, there's nothing there. No one travels to Concord to, for vacation or to see something. No. But guess what? There's a huge population there and people's families live there and people get married and remote workers. So the biggest thing is that most people, if you're new to the Airbnb space, you're thinking vacation time because that's probably when your average person uses it. But wow. it's, it, it's now a commodity. It, it's basically like taking the place of hotels because does a family want to stay mm -hmm. in one room with their two kids or guess what? The kid's bedtime is your bedtime, right? Or does that family want to go rent a house for about the same price and you have your own house. So anyways, Airbnb is doing well. Don't listen to the media. Media is basically clickbait. All they're trying to do is advertise negative headlines to steal your attention so they can sell it to advertisers, which we all know to be true this day and age. 10 years ago, if you didn't know that, that's okay. But if you don't know it on this day and age, you're sleeping under a rock. That's how it is. So don't listen to the media. All they want to do is scare you so you click their headlines. I love it. I love it. I know some cities have taken a major stance of banning them or cutting down. I know. So what's your thinking on that? 
Yeah, there's actually a list that gets updated all the time about which cities are Airbnb friendly, which ones don't allow it, and which ones actually enforce it. So it's only on maybe 5 or 10% of cities that don't allow it, but then only 3% of those cities actually enforce it, right? So here's some gray area, but that's for you to decide. For example, San Francisco, they don't allow Airbnbs. That's where Airbnb is founded, and that's one of the top Airbnb places in the world. But technically, the city doesn't allow it, but there's a huge Airbnb market there, so yeah. they don't enforce it. Number two, where do people live in America? Everywhere, right? There's thousands of cities. So if you're if the one city you're looking at doesn't like Airbnb, <laughs> go to the next city. Because again, you don't have to be in a touristy place or a vacation yep. place for Airbnb to do well. And even if that's the case, because most people, if you buy an Airbnb, you want to be able to you want to be able to have a second home, vacation home. There's a thousand places in America that are that have lakes and views and snow. So if yep. one city doesn't like Airbnb, go somewhere else. That is not a factor. I love it. I love it. I love it. Do the Airbnbs go do well? Of course, near to universities or certain base where like naval base or hospitals is again, I'm thinking about traveling nurses and all that, but tourism definitely. So which are four, five different locations one should look into maybe in a metro area? Yeah. You've got obviously vacation areas, right? In general, there's places that you personally like to visit because there's a lot of value. You can use this house for free and it's going to pay you. Number three, yeah. like you said, universities, because guess what? There's people coming and going to universities all the time, right? People's families, their parents, they want to come visit their kids. There's people that want to visit the college to see if, if their kids want to go there, whatever. There's going to be just basically a, a, a lot of transient occupancy going on. Obviously around hospitals because... Basically, anywhere you can have remote or traveling workers, right? And the medical space is all is obviously one that everybody knows. Yeah. yeah. So for traveling nurses, that's a huge market as well. So if yeah. you, yeah, if you want to buy a house that's close to a couple of different hospitals, then there's you can market that to that niche. And that niche is actually it can be a little bit easier, but you have to get plugged into different channels. For example, if you were by a hospital and you were setting up your properties to market to traveling medical professionals, they're probably going to stay for two, three, four, five, six months. That's different than an Airbnb yeah. where people are staying from, for three to five nights. So that's still very profitable. It's an but extended stay and you can't really variate the price you will get, right? If they stay six months, they're looking for a good deal. So you're locked in for that many months, let's say. But having Airbnb with only four days stay, five days stay, you could do much better. Is that right? Yeah. Basically, yeah. It's just like any commodity, like the for renting stuff, the shorter the term, or you, the more you got to pay. Because because the cost of holding the property for the owner, like if I have to if I have to turn the property over ten times in one month, I have a higher cost, right? Because I have to pay the cleaners yep. and turnover versus if I rent the property to one person and they're there for three months. But that's a good niche though because you're gonna have less turnover, stable. It's, yeah, yeah, it's stable, less maintenance. It's you book one client and your house has revenue for three months versus the Airbnb. Yeah. You book one client, you've got a booking for three days. So, three but days. again, huh. it's like the ratio that I've seen is. Midterm rent, which is the medical professionals, is around double mm -hmm. what the long-term rent is, whereas short-term rent is around three to four times what the midterm yeah. rent is. So that's almost double what the midterm rent is. Now, some yeah. people will argue with this, and they're correct. It's not always that ratio. I'm talking about if you find places that are going to be optimal for these types of investments. Mm -hmm. I've done them all, and so those are my numbers, and they're all awesome. You can't go wrong. I mean, at the end of the day, You've got properties that are paying you double to triple to quadruple what traditional long-term rent would be. So if you're an investor, that must sound wonderful because if you're an investor and we're talking, you're, you probably have experience in long-term rentals, right? Where now the yeah. cash flow is much smaller. Or <laughs> if you're new to the space, then your, your first interest is probably, hey, I'd love to have an Airbnb because I want to create wealth, but I also love to have a vacation home for my family and I want to go somewhere. Those are the type of phone calls that I get. And for those people, yeah, you can have a free vacation house that pays you. How awesome is that? Yeah, that's fabulous. You know, something really impressed me that night when you got so many of us fired up in Walnut Creek, California at the RIA meeting mm -hmm. was your systems. I want to pick your brains. I mean, you mentioned you have just perfected the system and you're working only four hours a week or something like that to make ungodly money. You're saying maybe 360,000 came to my mind somehow. 60,000 per rental, per Airbnb property. Is that true? Those numbers are right or wrong or? Yeah, no, that, that's about the ballpark. It, it's very profitable. I'm able to do that without working very many hours is, is 
systems and delegation, which Vinny, you're the king of that. I mean, you own hundreds of, of units and the multi-space and I've invested in some of those properties. So I've seen your P&Ls mm-hmm. and I, I know how well your properties do, but for the listeners listening, this is obviously an easier entry point than if you were going to go buy an apartment building like Vinny does, which is yeah. why I just give Vinny my money. So I don't have to deal with all the details of the apartments and I stick with the Airbnb. But to delegate, it's like this. Most of the <laughs> message, most of the messaging is automated through the Airbnb platform. I won't get into too much details about it, but the messaging, pretty much most of that's automated. You don't have to do much. Number two, you have a local cleaning team that specializes in short-term rentals. So they're going to more than just clean the house. They're going to change light bulbs, put batteries in remotes. If there's pool floats left out in the pool, they're going to put it all back. They're basically make the house look perfect every time there's a turnover. Number three, you have a local handyman. Now, all three of those things are connected. So Airbnb, someone books, they get, they automatically get set a greeting message, a check-in message, check-in, check-out, right? Now the clean, and then the cleaners get messaged of when that booking is. So guests check out at 10 a.m., cleaners show up at 10.30, cleaners get there, a door handle is broken. They call, the handyman shows up, he fixed it, I get the bill. Mm-hmm. So I didn't do any of that. I didn't message the guests. I didn't let the guests in. I didn't talk to the guests. I didn't call the cleaners. I didn't call the handyman. All I got was basically a, a, a paycheck for the, from when the, the guests were there. And then I pay the cleaner, I pay the handyman, but like I, and, and I, I set that so it's automated as well. So they just automatically charge my credit card. I get the invoice. I take a look at it if I want to. If I trust them, I'm not going to check yeah. it every time. And there you go. Now I'm running an Airbnb Super. business with six properties across three states. And I actually don't even work four hours a week on it anymore because it's set up. You know, I maybe work like an hour or two a week. Now, sometimes that fluctuates. If we have an issue, say something major happens where snow damages a roof and I got to talk to contractors, but that's, that's, for the most part, I'm spending one or two hours a week on this business. Now, to set it up, wow. obviously it takes more time, but any business that you set up, is going to take time to set up. I think what people are interested in is what's the long-term commitment after you've yeah. you know done the upfront work. And in this case, it's, it's relatively, I want to say it's, I want to say it's easy, but it's simple. It, anybody can do this. I have a lot of friends that have zero real estate background. They saw what I was doing. They bought properties. They're doing well. They have vacation properties in, in Scottsdale and Tahoe also, because that's why I bought properties. They saw what I did. And they're doing great. Yeah. They have free vacation homes in beautiful areas that pay them a profit. So it's pretty, it's pretty, Excellent. pretty nice. So let me ask you a question. Are there some numbers, Eric, you could share? The property should be like 300 thousand or 400,000 and then the rent should be ADR we call average daily rate right so average daily rate what should it be and what should be the occupancy so that we are able to make it a worthwhile cash flow machine and have the right cash on cash returns so that's a big one that's a big one so what do you think you will say is going to be able to, looks like, oh, Eric, I think it's his internet. I think we are having a little bit difficulties. Please hold on. Eric should be joining anytime. He's in Hawaii or someplace. I don't know. Maybe Southern California. I know he's got Airbnbs in the Bay Area. I live in Danville, California. Some of you know me, follow me. Please, these episodes, if you like them and give five-star reviews because that really helps to bring great guests and great information for you. The big thing is, that we definitely want to get into Airbnbs. And even though the laws are different, laws are changed always, right? You can be grandfathered also. You could look into the local jurisdictions, local people so that you could see. And that's what I think is very exciting to diversify. And that's what I've been doing. My power of Vinnie Chopra is how to raise money, how to collect money, from investors and how to be able to really use that money for different things. My students are using for manufacturing plants, for car washes, for laundry mats, for franchising business. So my academy students are using the money raised for multifamily, for uh, storage units, for uh, mobile home parks. I just bought a marina with my brother Bo over there. We are thinking about buying a golf course. It's just mind boggling what you can do with your money and also investors' money. Brother Eric is back. Yay. I was just keeping everybody entertained as you got the, got the uh, internet figured out. You know. So let me ask you a question. So systems are the key. Do you advertise on VRBO, Verbo, and Airbnb? And how many other websites do you have to advertise? And do they all work together if it's uh, one calendar connects to the other calendar? 
Yeah, good question. So I'm on Airbnb, Verbo, and Booking.com, and then I have management software that plugs into all of those. So I'm just operating off of one calendar, right? So it's, to me, it looks okay. the same as if I was just using Airbnb, but now I'm getting more marketing, essentially. Now, you can do direct bookings, mm -hmm. but I'm not a big fan of direct bookings because I'm going to save, I don't know, 10%. But guess what? I don't have Airbnb's $3 million yeah. insurance policy. So when someone breaks something at my house yes. or if there's a dispute over money, Number one, Airbnb yeah. is going to hold that guest accountable because that, that guest cares uh -huh. about their reviews. Where if I give someone a bad review on Airbnb, they're probably done because mm -hmm. no one else is going to rent them their house if I give them a bad review. So I have, I basically have more protection as the host if I go through their channels. Mm -hmm. And I have people all the time try to, hey, can we book this on the side because it's going to save you money, save me money? If no, because that's bad for me and good for you because you, I, I have no recourse to that person unless I want to take them to a small claims court. I don't want to deal with that. With Airbnb, mm -hmm. uh, there's that yeah. buffer right there where it, it holds people accountable. It's got their credit card. It's got their driver's license. Yeah, I don't recommend doing direct bookings. You can. A lot of people talk about your own brand, but it's like, you think your personal marketing is one individual, even if you have 10 or 20 properties, what's that compared to Airbnb, which has, I think they book, I saw a stat the other day, they book 4 million nights every single night on their platform. What? Every single oh. night they have 4 million bookings. Okay. So why would I, right? I'm never going to do that well. And also, for example, 80% of my bookings come from Airbnb and maybe like 10, 15% come from Verbo, right? And Verbo advertises, you see them on TV, some on the internet. So, like, so just think about that. If those large companies, if that's yeah. the spread, Airbnb is getting 80%, Verbo is 15%. And in some cities, this ratio can fluctuate. What's that going to be compared to what you're going to do as an individual? So you can do it as an individual, but oh after like it, it, when you have to dispute stuff, you, it. you plan, yeah, it's, it's, it's not worth the extra money. You're, you're putting yourself at risk. Like if somebody wow. dies in my property, guess what? Airbnb has a $3 million policy that covers every single bookings, right? So then if I was ever going to get sued because someone drowned in my pool, they have to get through Airbnb's policy. Then if they win, Airbnb pays them $3 million. Then obviously if they get past all of that, they would have to get through my insurance and blah, blah, blah. But it's just another layer. So it's like, why would I deal with any of that for 10% more money on one booking one time? That's nothing over like in the big scheme of your business. So I laugh at that concept now when, because there's a lot of Airbnb online coaches that talk about, oh, direct bookings and you can make all this more money. And now the platforms don't control you. So you can, you can never be kicked off. And I don't know. I think they're just trying to sell you a course to do direct bookings, but on my experience, no thanks. Unless it's a personal that is friend. That's amazing. Maybe. Vinny, if you want to go into my yeah. properties, we can do a direct booking. You save some money. I save some money. No problem. But you're my brother. So, you know, Dude. the general public, sorry, no can do. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What you're saying is so very true. So very true. And let me ask you also a question. As our uh, viewers who are watching us on YouTube and channels and all, and also audio, what will be some superpowers if somebody says, I want to do it, I want to get started, where would they start? Huh? Could you give some idea? Yeah. So their superpower, this is what I recommend. There is an online course. It's called BNB Formula, not Airbnb, BNB Formula by Brian Page. Uh -huh. It's an online course you can buy for 500 mm -hmm. bucks or 700 bucks. Just listen to it because really at the end of the day, like mm -hmm. everybody knows how to buy a house or, or to rent a house. What intimidates people is how do I run essentially a hotel? Because that's what you're doing, right? How would I run a hotel and how do I run it, how do I run it remotely? Because I'm not going to be the guy that you, I'm not going to be the guy that gets a phone call at midnight when there's a toilet clogged, right? So it's surprisingly easy. And that's how I felt about it. And once I listened to this course, I didn't even watch it. I just listened to it. I just listened to somebody explain the concept. How do you run it remotely? How sure. do you screen the cleaners? How do you screen a handyman? Like, how do you connect all those people? Mm -hmm. How do you hire a virtual assistant to communicate and direct all those people once you've got a few properties and you need a little help. So that course just runs everybody yes. from A to Z through it. And it, after you listen to that course, most people that I've recommended this to, if they actually listen to it and it's not hard, they're like, oh, that's how you do it? Okay, I, I got this. That's not hard. And then how do you buy the house? You call me. I'm the mortgage guy. You, just <laughs> the you give me the paperwork. I figure out all the loans and the guidelines and the rates and the clothes. I do a lot of kind of stuff. You don't have to do anything other than you just give me a loan app. You just give me some basic information and let me work my magic. Or you can go rent the house. That's a different story. But that's oh, your yeah. action. So if someone listens to this, your call to action is one thing. Go to bnbformula.com. I'm no affiliate. I don't get paid a commission. I wish I did. 
Go to bnbformula.com, buy the online course. You can buy the book if you want, but I, I think most people aren't going to read that because everyone's so busy these days. Yeah. Buy the course, listen to it. And then if you're, if that sounds good to you, then contact me or Vinny and we'll give you next step. I love it. I love it. I love it. You heard it from the top professional guys right here. I know lots of us are trying to diversify and, you know, have those sure. passive incomes. Why not? Why not? Even W-2 person, anybody could do this. That's the exciting part. Once you buy the right property in the right location, get the systems going, this could be making 200, 300, 400,000 income for you passively where you are not involved. Look at Eric is involved only one and a half, two hours a week. Anybody could spend that kind of time. So I'm going to be a big proponent. And Eric, maybe go with this with you also, with Pramod also, and we'll build this company huge. I'm just so fired up. I love hospitality. I've made six million profit with my partner, bought the uh, hotel for six million, sold it for 12 million in mm -hmm. just two years. That's a lot of money. A lot Remember of money, that. brother. But I think with this one, you're able to increase equity. But when you do renovations, when you do different things like that, like Pramod was sharing something this morning and he's in India, he's flying back here. He lives uh -huh. in Chicago area. But okay. that's where we looked at the numbers this morning. It was 37% cash and cash. This right. is the beginning. And the value went up. Oh my gosh, I should remember that. Just the uh, 223 was the house he bought. It's worth 375 after renovation of 45 yeah. days right. or maybe 60 days. It, and he's been just churning it two homes. He's done it. Now we are buying four bedroom, five bedroom home right there in the nice location outside Chicago. So I would love for you to share with me some opportunity so that we could do business here in California or other places. And the big thing is you don't have to put too much money down. Yeah. Loan, the bank is going to give us loan for renovations and others and all that. So yeah. again- And, and, and Vinny, it's very easy to get fix, fixed rate debt. I know with multifamily, it's, you know, the loan terms tend to be three to five years, yes. right? But in this space, you get a nice three-year totally. fixed loan and your debt's fixed for life. And that's, no, that's easier than if you had to redo your financing every three to five years, like multifamily. Totally. Not, totally. not that multifamily is not amazing. Multifamily is amazing. No, no, no. This is just, this is just another revenue source, right? Yes. That's the exciting part. I hope everybody listening, guys. Hey, my bread and butter has been multifamily. Did 40 syndications and funds. My new one, $75 million fund, strategic income fund with my brother Sapan. The key thing is you got to change. You got to pivot. You yeah. got to look for, you know, how you can really work less and enjoy more vacations and make memories. I read that book, Die With Zero. Literally, it doesn't say die with zero, but leave millions behind for your family, friends, children, everybody. But enjoy the time you are on this earth. Make the memories, enjoy those vacations. And that's what you have done. I know you said, Vinny, every location is like a resort in Scottsdale, in Arizona, You're over here in the Bay Area. And then you were going to buy one Big Sur. I don't know if you bought that already or not. You had mentioned that. You know, we're gonna work uh, big, big bear down here in Southern California. Big, big bear. Yeah, I'm gonna be. Yep, big, I'm gonna be yeah. I just, yeah, I just opened up a new office on, on, on down by the beach, which I showed you guys some video of. So now that I've got that project wrapped up, I'm gonna start on, on this next one soon. So get your ski boots or your snowboard boots ready, Vinny. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fly you down to Southern California snowy mountains and push you down a hill. Watch out. Let's do Watch it, brother. Let's do it. If they have snowmobiles, I loved it in Steamboat, Colorado. For yeah. the Bo and I, he just shared the picture with me with the helmet and the ski boat. This, yeah, I said snow skis, right? Yeah, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, we yep. were just having so much fun with Go Abundance. Maybe you were there too, and Mario was there, if I've I remember all, correctly. I've seen the video. You guys. Sure have a good time when you're not talking about investing, which is great. Exactly. Invest, but you got to have fun or what's the point, right? You got to smell the roses in life. That's true. And, Bo, and I know you'll be there in Las Vegas. We'll be doing Inner Circle Mastermind coming mm -hmm. up in a couple of months or so. We'll look at it and just take an Airbnb, some really big castle over there, mansion, and just enjoy with 15 or 20 of us and just have 
good thinking and planning and uh, just having fun, fun time, along with some mind brain cells generation of what was the right word we will we'll come out with a lot of great ideas that's what this masterminds are any uh, last comments you'd like to say i know we might break this into two segments because you gave so many powerful things to really talk about any last comments you want to share with the audience yeah yeah for everybody thinking about this the time to start it's not yesterday. Well, it is yesterday. But what I mean by that is start right now. It's, it's never too late. As, as I learned from Vinny's online multifamily investing academy, there's, there's up to 25 different real estate markets taking place in the country at any one time where one place is at the top of the cycle and another place is the bottom of the cycle. There's not one real estate yes. cycle across the entire country. You just have to focus in on an area yep. and see where people are going, where the growth is. For example, if you go buy a house in Tahoe for four bedrooms and you're in a good location, you're probably spending one and a half million dollars. Okay, you probably aren't going to buy there the first time you invest. Guess what? You can go buy a four bedroom house, buy a lake for $400,000 and a million places in the country. And if there's scenery and there's water, or there's places to hike and there's outdoorsy-ness in the area, people will go there. So guess what? There's You can do this. It's not too late. It's not, Airbnb didn't come and go. It's not a bus there's still so much yeah. room for growth. Take action, contact me or Vinny or start with bnbformula.com. Buy that course, listen to it, see what you think. And if you're interested, you've got two people here to contact. Take action. Take like Vinny always says, that's my last word. You got to take action. That's so Let's right. Go. You know, opportunity. Let's go, Chuck. At our door. Get after it. I know, go for it. Don't just sit, don't just be, don't stop the car on the freeway, but go home and look into this interview whenever with your family. You could really make a big difference in your cash flows and your vacations and your memories and charities and all those great things. You know, brother Eric, you always bring so much value to the audiences. You brought a lot of value to me in my life, and you have been my partner also, and investor also, and a good friend. Thanks so much for taking the time, and let's crush it, and let's make this business huge, and we can really have wonderful time in Airbnb, guys. That's the name of the game. We'll see you next episode. You take care.